So I'm watching the Boeing congressional hearing yesterday and also today, two days, broadcasting live on CNBC because there really wasn't a lot going on, especially yesterday, Tuesday, uh, in terms of earnings, economic data, and then after the close, a lot of companies reported and Wednesday they reported. So they don't have this hearing on all day like they did on Tuesday, but I was just watching it. And I usually make fun of these hearings, right? You look at Google. The Google CEO was interviewed, it was December of this year. And they're talking about privacy issues. And you know, it's Representative Stephen King from Iowa. He, he asked a question. He's like, how does hateful information about me show up on a seven-year-old's iPhone? <laughs> you know? And then you had Representative uh, Zoe Logfrin from California asked, how does search work? <laughs> like, how does search work? It, it's... I mean, just do a little bit of research on the company when you're going there. Just do a little bit. But it's usually a complete shit show, and, and it's hilarious because, you know, I mean, you can even go with Zuckerberg, right? I mean, Zuckerberg was great. I'm not talking about the recent uh, Libra hearings, but before when they were going over privacy issues. And it, it, Senator Chuck Grassley from Iowa says, Mr. Zuckerberg, a magazine I recently opened came with a floppy disk off me 30 free hours of something called America Online. Is that the same as Facebook? <laughs> Actually, ask that question. Orrin Hatch, a senator from Utah, asked, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Again, this is with the testimony. This is in the testimony. I started asking him. And Zuckerberg sarcastically, but not sarcastically, said, uh, we sell ads, and we make billions of dollars doing that. Yet Buddy Carter, representative from Georgia, asked, did you know the Motion Picture Association of America is having problems with privacy? And this is challenging their existence. And Zuckerberg replied, again, a little bit sarcastically, I believe piracy has been an issue for a very long time, even before Facebook was created. And when you listen to these, they're actually entertaining and it's fun. So it's easy to make fun of. You could Google all the stories and everything. But when you're looking at, at these senators in Congress, most of them have a background in law. They're lawyers. They know very little about technology and they never will. So most of the time, they just show up to these hearings and get some airtime going to do their grandstanding, yell at whoever they have to yell at, trash whoever they're interviewing. They don't do any research on the company, and that's why it's funny. You can make fun of these guys because all this stuff, 24-hour news services, you see now. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and before that, you never – I mean, C-SPAN maybe, but you never really saw these hearings. You never really saw what's going on. Now it's every place, especially when they ask questions like this. Now with Boeing – a little different. And I was watching this thing kind of saying, okay, I want to be entertained and make fun of it. But they were asking CEO Dennis Mullenberg some really good questions. Like, did you know there was a problem before the crashes? Who did you contact or what authorities did you go to when you learned that there was a problem? Pretty simple questions. And yet Mullenberg sidestep a lot of these basic questions. Just kept apologizing on every saying, you know, we have to do a better job. And it got to the point where it says, I know, I know you say we have to do a better job, but answer the question. When you see Google, Facebook on the Hill getting grilled on privacy issues and you know, not just Google and Facebook, but credit card companies and banks were hacked. They have congressional hearings about that, bringing up the CEOs. Usually 90% of the time, these events turn out to be great buying opportunities because the world already knows everything. If the politicians are talking about it, everything's factored in, right? Because they're the last to know everything. But now all the risks are out there. We all know them as investors. The centers are highlighting stuff that pretty much everyone knows about already and just keeps yelling at the people, kind of what they're doing with Boeing. But you know, usually this creates buying opportunities for every stock when they're on the hill. If you look at Facebook, you look at Google, you look at – Capital One, you look at, at, at J.P. Morgan, the banks at all-time highs, a lot of these stocks, or pretty close, 52-week highs. Some of them at our all-time highs, like J.P. Morgan. I love the fact with Google, again, they were interviewed December 2018. If you do a search on this event on Google, almost every story comes up saying Congress blew its hearing with Google. Congress asks ridiculous questions. Senators have absolutely no clue. <laughs> you know, I'm sure Google has something to do with that since they control all the search on their site. There's nothing that says Google was wrong anyway, but if you Google it, but I, that was funny. But getting back to the point, most stocks are buys post-congressional hearings. I'm not sure that's the case with Boeing. I mean, you have the CEO, can't answer simple questions. I have even more, you're talking about Boeing's pilots, how they're sending instant messages suggesting they have problems with the Mac systems, right? The 737 Max. 
uh, not just with systems, but with software. But in these instant messages, they were pressured not to say anything publicly since it's going to result in more simulated training for pilots, which is very, very expensive. It's going to increase cost dramatically for Boeing. And again, you have the CEO sidestep it. The CEO of Boeing know about these problems ahead of time. He still couldn't answer, even though he was asked about 20 times. Someone asked, why don't you make the FAA the final authority when it comes to safety? This way, they would be in the hot seat today instead of you. When they were talking to the CEO of Boeing, which makes sense. I mean, Boeing has final say on, hey, everything's okay, we're good. Yes, they go through the FAA and stuff like that. But why you should have them as the last approval, and if they get it wrong, it's not Boeing's fault. It's the FAA. Wasn't the case. But that was a good question. And when I look at this, I thought most of the risk was in the rearview mirror. But after these hearings, I think we're more like the fourth, fifth inning than the eighth. And look, guys, I know Boeing well. I visited their facilities in Everett, Washington a few years ago. I know everything about the 737 MAX. I recommend a companies based on this and suppliers that did very, very well in my portfolio and Curzio venture opportunities. It's the biggest driver of sales to the company by far. In fact, it's the fastest selling plane in the company's history. More than 5,000 orders coming in from over 100 customers worldwide. So if you go to Boeing right now and say, hey, I want to order 20 of these MAX planes, they're going to say, great, thank you for your order, billion dollars, whatever it costs, you'll get your first plane in five to six years. That's how long their backlog is. And this one plane accounts for 80% of their backlog, right? Since Boeing manufactures five planes, this one plane is 80% of their backlog. And when I look at Boeing, it's now trading at 17 times forward earnings, which is in line with the market. User traded a premium before all this happened. But these are projected earnings. I mean, these earnings are based on the sales that expect to be filled for 737 MAX, which customers are having second thoughts since they could buy a similar plane with similar specs from Airbus, and that's called the NEO line. It's not apples to apples comparison, but fuel efficiency, uh, the NEO is a little bit larger. Again, it doesn't research on both of these planes, but it is similar. If you had to say get a grade on everything, on everything together, the MAX is probably a little bit better than NEO. That's why they got tons of orders. But Airbus is getting tons of orders now for the NEO. But for me, watching the hearings, I was very surprised to see so many centers on the ball here. I'm so used to this being a, a complete shit show that they had no idea about the company you're talking about. They're like, uh, Facebook, how do you make money? <laughs> what is search? They ask Google, hey, what, what is search? <laughs> like, you, they never search anything on Google? Come on, come on. I know some of these guys are like 95 years old, but come on. Your job is to do the research on the company, especially if you got a question them and yell at them and do grandstanding. At least know what you're talking about. Come on, put like five minutes in. Google, Google <laughs> to see what they do. It's not too hard. But it's nice to see so many senators really on the ball with their questions. And you know what? They should be since people died because of this misstep. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but Senator Ted Cruz, great job. I bring up the instant messages, which were re recently released, where it was a senior Boeing pilot. We told a colleague he'd un unknowingly lied to regulators, right? That's what I said earlier. So Mullenberg, CEO, said he just learned about these details of this exchange recently. And Cruz fired back. I mean, he's like, how is that possible? You're the CEO. The buck stops with you. And how did your team not put this out in front of you, run with their hair on fire, saying, we got a real problem here? And he started yelling at him. And it was emotional. And it, to me, it wasn't grandstanding. It was, like, how didn't you know about this? Are you kidding me? But it's just cool to see Democrats, Republicans on the same page here, not grandstanding, but trying to find out if this could have been avoided, and what's Boeing doing right now to make sure a problem like this doesn't happen in the future? Because this isn't a credit card company getting hacked here. It's not a bank. It's not privacy issues where, you know, there's obviously a big problem that needs fixing. When Boeing gets this wrong, innocent people die. This is a major problem. But when I look at Boeing right now, I've done a pretty good job recommending this stock, telling you what to do with it, telling you to avoid this name shortly after these crashes occurred. I got a lot of emails, even from pilots, great stuff, saying, ah, they'll figure it out. This is their biggest plane. This is a big deal. I knew it was going to be a long-term process. I get it. 
And if you look at, at the Max, I mean, they halted manufacturing the Max. I knew that would hurt Boeing's bottom line since, again, it's by far the biggest selling plane, not just today, but in the history of the company. And about two months ago, about six weeks ago, I said, hey, it's time to start looking at the stock as most of the risk was priced in. And Boeing's up slightly since then. And I really thought most of the risk was priced in. But after these hearings, the CEO couldn't answer a lot of these simple questions. And he was nervous up there. If you see his face, and every question was like, well, you know, we got to do a better job. We take full response. We know that. Answer the question. Did you know about this? If you did, how come you didn't do anything about it? I mean, I don't know who was prepping that CEO. They didn't do a good job, though, because he looked very, very shaky up there, and he couldn't answer simple questions. He couldn't even pivot. He wasn't even able to pivot the right way. Which is, you know, every single senator, they always do is pivot all the time. They don't ever ask a question. They never ask a question yes or no. They always, you know, pivot into something else and something else that's greater. But usually the CEOs are prepped on stuff like that. But when I look at this after the hearings, and guys, always be willing to change your opinion if the facts change. You don't have to be bullish forever on whatever, gold, because you believe in something. Well, gold is pretty much tracking or, or it is, I wouldn't say correlated, but negatively correlated to, to stocks. When stocks go higher, gold goes lower, and stocks look like they're going higher. So if you're a gold investor, be careful. Gold's probably going to come down more, and stocks probably going to get hit further with interest rates being lowered, the election coming up, Trump's gauge for the economy is the S&P 500. He's going to do everything he can to prop up these stock prices. We, you know that going in. You see it, whether you're, you're a bear or a bull. That, that, those are facts, right? You know it's going to happen. But with Boeing... There's just too much risk, too much uncertainty that, that it's not going away anytime soon. And there have been few canceled orders, but more important, that there have been very few new orders for the MAX since the crash took place over a year ago. Very few. Now, there would be a lot more cancellations if Airbus didn't have a super long backlog of its own for the NEO. But if I was Airbus, I mean, this should have been in the process six months ago, nine months ago. I would start adding capacity as quick as possible. Even if it takes a few years. Because Boeing, at least the CEO, I mean, they're on full tilt here. I don't think they get it. And one more mistake, God forbid, one more crash, or even one more problem with their computer systems and more delays, it's going to result in tons of cancellations. It hasn't yet because there's no other alternative. And when they go to Airbus, they're like, well, you know, you're probably not going to get your planes for seven years. Well, do something about that. Increase capacity. One of your competitors is struggling right now, and these guys, you have hundreds of customers willing to spend billions, if not tens of billions of dollars as an alternative. Airbus, figure that out. I know how long your backlog is. I know a lot of people buy that the, the Neo in place of the Max, but I, this is a chance for you to take incredible market share right now. And that's going to happen if this continues to get delayed, which it looks like it will. They said oh, early next year, everything will be fine. That's what we heard for the last six months. And listen to these guys, it seems like they have no clue. So I wouldn't be buying Boeing, even though 90% of the time when you see companies, and there's, you could Facebook, Google, when they have these hearings, it's a buying opportunity. Both these stocks went higher. Be careful with Boeing here. You just happen to be listening to a lot of that call. If you, you can read about it, you could go, everyone's talking about it, Wall Street Journal, Post, wherever. And let's see how he handles the questions today. He has to handle them a lot better than he did yesterday, but... People are concerned that he is lying. Philip Bowe knows him very well. He's the one that covers on CNBC, covers the autos, covers the airlines. And he even said, listen, these centers are saying that you're lying. What do you have to say? And he's like, well, we're not lying. But yet it sounds like you are when they issued a question because you can't answer it. Did you know about these? Oh, yeah, I did. But all right, why didn't you do anything? Well, um, you know, we got to do a better job at Boeing. <laughs> That's how you answer the question. It's crazy. But be careful owing Boeing here. I know it's... Yeah, been right both of my calls, but seems like I'm flip flop a little bit. But again, when, when information changes, you have to go with it. Right now, man, Boeing's all over the place, and this uncertainty is going to continue at least the next three months, probably six months. That assumes everything goes right and they're able to get these planes back in the air. But let's see what happens. I think you have time before that happens, and you're not buying a super cheap stock here. It's trading at a market multiple. It's not trading at twelve times earnings because of this risk. It's trading at a market multiple where growth is actually slowing because they're not manufacturing as many planes right now. Just something to think about.